Welcome back, everybody. Wrapping up probability today. I'm going to play a little bit of a card game here, see what the data happens, and probably go to one of the most useful things that, uh, especially when you're in a pinch about probability, that I think you will find. So um, the game for this experience is this. And by the way, all the lessons are from statsmedics.com. Links to all the lessons below. Like, subscribe, comment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the game is this. Um, five cards total. So I've got my five cards right here. There are two aces and three kings. Player chooses the first card and records the results. Then they pick the second card without replacing the first one. And you win if you get a pair of aces or a pair of kings. Okay, so you're gonna so the students would go through and play these a total of ten times each, and they're gonna record the data on their sheet here, and then we're gonna total them all up at the front of the class. So there's my first one. So I would put down ace, king. And that is a winner. No. There is my percentages. Obviously sped up for fun. So anyway, so for me, I would get a grand total of 1 out of 10 or 10%, right? The data that I got from my 25 students last year is that so they would go in and so they recorded it at the front of the board. This is what they got. Okay. 93 out of 250, which was 37.2%. And obviously, we have all sorts of types. Um, this is just one example of what you can see. So this would be, remember, we call this experimental probability. This is what we got when we went through and did a simulation, went from there. Now, there's something called a tree diagram to calculate out the theoretical probability. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and fill out um, the boxes as we go so we can kind of see how this thing works. Okay? So right here, this is right here is going to be what's the probability of getting an ace? So the probability that this over here is going to get the first case is I've got two out of the five cards are aces which means that the probability obviously getting the first card is a king, I get three out of five. Now, much like what we talked about in the previous video, what ends up happening is now your sample space has changed because now, since we're not replacing it, if the first king is, or the first card is an ace, we're doing this out of four cards left over. So if I get the first card is an ace, what's the probability the second card is an ace? Now, one of the aces is already off the table, in fact, so it's like this, right? So here are my cards. So if I have the first card as an ace, that's off the table. So now what's the probability that the second card is going to be an ace? Oh, that's going to be one out of four. The probability that the second card is a king, one, two, three, three out of four. All right. So the probability that the first is an ace and the second is an ace, you're going to multiply down these trees. So in this case here, this is going to become two-fifths times one fifth, one fourth, excuse me, and that's going to be two out of 20. If I go this route, if I get an ace first and then a king, that is going to be two fifths times three fourths and get six out of 20. Now, oftentimes somebody will ask, well, wait a second, Mr. Hayes, these don't add up to be one. And you're right, but we still have this bottom part of the tree to go through and do. Okay. So, <clears throat> Here are my cards. What's the probabilities if the first king is, or the first card is a king? So let's take that one off. So now I've got four still. Probability of getting an ace is going to be two out of four. The probability of getting a king is going to be two out of four. So then the probability is up over here. So the probability of getting first a king and then a second, a, the a first a king and then an ace second is going to be three, four, three fifths times two-fourths. That's going to be six out of 20. And you're going to do the same thing down here. You can get the same probability, three-fifths times two-fourths, and get six out of 20. All right? So find the theoretical probability of winning the game. Well, which two are going to give you the wins? The wins are going to come here. So win, lose, 
win. These are all independent, so we can just add them up. We don't have to worry about an intersection. And so because of that, I'm going to get 2 out of 20 plus 6 out of 20. So I've got 8 out of 20 in terms of theoretical. So again, this is theoretical. So that's going to be 0 0.4. Or zero. Now, my class, this is part of the reason why I said don't ever worry about reducing these fractions, because if you reduce these fractions, then you're just going to have to, I mean, could you use a calculator for it? Sure. Just makes it easier if you don't. <clears throat> okay. So what is the probability that the first card is a king, given that the second person won the game? So, or given that, what's the probability the first card was a king, given that the person won the game? I'm sorry. So, the probability that we've got we got a first king, but we know that we won the game. Okay, so that's going to go on the bottom because the given always goes on the bottom, remember? So that probability there is 8 out of 20. What's the probability that you got a king first? So that's going to be up in doo -doo -doo -doo, this one right here. So that's going to go there. And that's actually both of those. So, because again, remember what you end up happening here is this is equal to probability of first and win divided by the probability of winning. So I get 6 out of 28 or 20, so that's going to be 6 out of 8, or you can write it out like that. You got a 75% chance. So if you know that you won, 75% of the time you're going to get a king, you had gotten a king first. Okay, a um, couple other things to point out. These right here are basically, this is the probability of, so if we call this A, let's see. Da, da, da. Sorry, I had to get my thoughts right here real quick, make sure the labeling was okay. So if I call this probability of A, this is going to be the probability of B given A, because it's the probability that this happens if this has already happened. So then this part over here, which is the probability of the first ace and a second ace, which is my and, happens to be the probability of this times the probability of B given A, which is right over here. Which looks remarkably similar to what we did down over here. Okay, because notice here, probability of first king given a win. If I solve for this, the probability of the and, I can just multiply both sides through by the probability of the win. So anyway, hope that's straight. Um, we'll talk more about it here in a second when we go formalize it. Talk to you soon.